our commemorative aero replica for what it stands for. A wonderful example of Canadian aeronautical achievements that gives us a great reminder of what Canadians can accomplish. And I thank you very much. Have the curtain open. Very excited and uh, a sort of a little bit sad that the arrow never made it into where it should have been in the world. I, I was a uh, structural and mechanical test engineer and la later a flight test engineer. And I can truthfully say that while I was on that work, I loved going to work every day. It was exciting. We we're on the cutting edge of technology and uh, as I say, sad was the day when it was all cancelled. Working in flight tests, of course, was the acme as far as I was concerned. And uh, there were very, very many unique things about this aeroplane. Yeah, and it's a, it's a beautiful replica. It's very, very close to what the uh, original arrow was. Too bad it doesn't fly. That's your last paycheck? Or you know? <laughs> no, it was one of the early ones. <laughs> Where? About? Yeah, I started on the jetliner. Oh, yeah. Sealing and pressurization. Oh, yes. December the 3rd, 1948, and I was there for until uh, there was no more to be cut up. I stayed to cut them up. Isn't that a sight, eh? Jim Floyd mentioned on Thursday uh, the fact that the aircraft was built on production tooling. There were two major decisions made by the executives. That was one of them. The other was that the aircraft would be controlled entirely, that is the shape of it, by the aerodynamicists. And that was fundamental to the ultimate success because uh, the mechanical engineers were told if you can't fit it into the envelope that the aerodynamicists have put together, then you have to redesign your part of it to go inside. And one of the things, one of the most notable uh, achievements was the undercarriage, the main undercarriage. The, the leg is shorter from the wing to the ground than it is when it's retracted. And so the main undercarriage not only uh, shortens in length, but it also, the tandem wheels turn so that they can lie flat in the wing. For those who would like to take a tour of the museum, please do so. I started there in 1950 until at the end. Then I was, re, I was rehired about a month later and I worked on the Avro car, the flying saucer. This is just beautiful. It's just like an, a reincarnation. It's, it looks so nice and they did a wonderful job. Uh, and it's, it's just great. See, he's wearing sandals. See, he looks pretty young. I'll tell you who might. This is my husband, Ed Prentice. He was a test pilot for A.B. Rowe, uh, worked with Don Rogers. Myself, I was hired by A.B. Rowe and on loan to the uh, Air Force. My husband was there for five years and I was there for seven and a half. I saw this plane when they were working on it a few weeks ago with tools all around it and I was so moved by it, I've forgotten how big it was, but to see it the way it really used to look, um, it, I, I could, I, I'm, I've been crying. It's uh, what we lost when they destroyed this beautiful plane, I, we, we could have, it's not too dramatic to say we might have lost our souls. This meant so much to Canadians. Thank you.